Ruby Rose, author of Unwanted Nasty Divorces. I am here today with Shana Bronfen and uh, Dominic Debatti to talk about the changes in the Civil Code of Procedure. Just to give you an idea of the changes that passed on January 1st, 2016 and how it affects uh, your case uh, or the future. So, uh, Shana, would you please give us a little review of the changes uh, as of January 1st? Um. There are numerous changes. I think what we should focus on probably are the ones that most affect your client uh, clients. Sure. Um, the pro probably the most important change in the civil in the new code of procedure is that um, attorneys are required to uh, discuss with their clients uh, possible avenues of resolution without going to court. Oh. Okay. Okay. And uh, in addition to discussing with their clients, they must also, there's a new document, uh, it's called a um, case protocol in English, and that is the document that is sort of the blueprint for the way your litigation file is going to be um, moved through the court system. So in other words, when, when documents will be produced, uh, if uh, the other lawyer or your, your own lawyer wants to have uh, an examination on discovery, those sorts of things. Um, so in the protocol, you are required to discuss uh, to what extent um, ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, uh, was considered as a possible avenue of resolution instead of going to court. Mm -hmm. So that is probably the most significant difference. Uh, I could also say that um, during the um, lead up to the new code of procedure, there was a possibility that they would make uh, mediation mandatory in uh, family files. Unfortunately, that was not retained. So mediation is not mandatory. Uh, an information session is mandatory. Um, to, to my mind, that's too bad because um, I think it's too easy for clients to just jump into litigation. And litigation, if you've never gone through it, if this is your first divorce, <laughs> um, and it often is, you have no idea how difficult it can really be. And not just in terms of the cost of litigation, but there's you're not in control of the process. Um, the judge will not spend the time fine-tuning, you know, the ultimate uh, agreement that you could possibly reach, whether it's in collaborative divorce or in mediation. So you have you have much more control over the process, and that, that's an important thing for clients. But they don't necessarily understand it when they're first making decisions right. about how to to settle, how how to deal with their divorce. And so the best piece of advice I could give you and people who read, read your book is keep lines of communication open as much as you possibly can mm -hmm. and try to encourage your, the, the parent of your children or your, your um, partner uh, to go for either mediation or collaborative divorce. So to try, also try to keep the emotions out of this process. I find that uh, through the hundreds of, of uh, mothers and, and fathers that I've spoken to, a lot of the, the, the anger was stemming from he did this and she did that and I don't like this and I don't like that and then so it becomes like a personal issue and it almost seems as if they're fighting out their personal issue in court, which is really not the right place for it, right? Uh, okay. And uh, Mr. Zabadi, do you have anything else to add about well, the civil code? The, 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 the code, uh, one of the aims was to emphasize the rights of the children because okay. we always you know, talk about the rights of the parents and so on. Right. And so one, now I'm not sure how far it went and there's, there's disagreement on that, but I think it, 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 it brought forth a little bit more the rights of the children to, a, a, uh, to parenting that is, that is more uh, in tune with their needs, the children's needs rather than the, than the parents' needs. And hence, uh, uh, the, the push towards uh, keeping parents out of court uh, finding more, more, you know, uh, effective ways of dealing um, and less litigious ways of dealing with uh, conflict or disagreements, parental disagreements. Coming up with parenting plans that are make sense for children, and um, and I think that that's 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 gone in the right direct or that's going in the right direction. Not enough, and and as Shane was saying, the it would have been nice to have something on more 
uh, obligatory mediation, you know, uh, more than we have, it'll come back up. I think that one day, I think that we're going to, to, to see, uh, you know. So it's a work in will, progress, is what you're saying. I think so. It's a slow work in progress, very frustrating. In the meantime, there's a lot of uh, children that are getting trampled, you know, in all of the uh, fighting that's going on and, and, uh, and the, the needless litigation. But, you know. And in terms of costs, uh, would you say that mediation or after the five free hours that, that you get, so mediation and collaborative law, would it cost less overall than to litigate? Well, I can tell you. Yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> you I have clients that, that tell me that they've spent 50 to 1, 200,000. $250,000, well. okay? That is an astronomical, you know, amount of money. I mean, it's just it's unthinkable when you get into the hundreds of thousands of dollars for people who don't have money. Right. It's not, we're not talking about millionaires who can, you know, just, you know, drop in the bucket. These are people who don't have the money. You and know, they're going into debt. Yeah, and money that, that, that children will not have, that's for sure, that children will not have. So... Absolutely. The cost of, of, of mediation, even if it's on a private basis and you get hourly rates that the lawyers charge, and because we have a lot of lawyers that are mediators, it's still cheaper than any litigation that you're going to And the system, as I, as I mentioned before, the system, it costs them a fortune to have people, you know, use their court, the court system. So, you know. And there was also the fact that there were Save, delays. save, save uh, in every direction. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and also the fact was that uh, about two years ago, um, I know that there was a delay of almost a year to get a trial date in court. So I think one of the reasons was that it was so hard to get any, uh, any to sit in front of a judge to, you know, to plead your case and all that. Um, and they wanted to cut that amount of time so it doesn't take so long to try and get that justice that you're looking for. Um, so, if, so going back to the question, in terms of collaborative law, could it be less expensive than litigating? It could be. Um, lawyers are, are um, remunerated at their hourly rate, and different lawyers have different hourly rates. Sure. Um, for people who have limited means, you may want to look for an attorney who has a sliding fee scale. Um, that's a possibility. Also, I will tell you that litigation is uh experienced as stressful not just for clients but for attorneys as well because we don't know what's going to happen we think probably we know under certain circumstances what's going to happen but the reality is, is that lawyers clients and judges are all human beings and not everybody sees the same issue the same way so we can't predict and and if an attorney is telling you no problem, I'm going to get you this in court. Be very careful because um, you cannot guarantee a result in litigation. In collaborative law, what you're telling your clients is that we will work as hard as we can to resolve this divorce. You will work hard, we will work hard, and we will work together. And we will come out with a resolution. If we can't, having exercised all of our best efforts and, and, you know, having had recourses if necessary to outside professionals, if we still can't resolve a part of the divorce, perhaps we've resolved most of it, which would be great. It, it redefines, it refines the debate to just one particular issue. Um, and at that point in time, there's only one thing to litigate, but it doesn't really tend to happen that way. Usually, it's a, probably about an 85% success rate in collaborative law, if not more. Um, what I would also say to you is that um, in collaborative law, uh, it's important that people understand that um, because of the way that decisions were made in the collaborative process. Whatever agreement you come out with at the end of the day tends to be respected to a much higher degree than uh, litigated judgments that are handed down by a judge.
And the reason really is because the two parents were involved together to come up with some kind of agreement that makes sense for both parties, right. as opposed to going to a judge and the judge deciding or favoring one over the other. And so you feel that resentment or that animosity that you lost. So in collaborative, there's no feeling of losing, uh, whereas in litigation, there's usually one loser, if not a few losers, which include the children. People in, uh, defend what they invest in. Yes. Okay? So if you invest in a parenting plan, you invest in your children and you do it together, even though there's disagreement and you're not holding hands, mm -hmm. then the chances of you upholding that is much greater. I tell parents all the time, treat your co-parenting relationship as a business, mm -hmm. a good business, not a bad business, a good business. No one wants their business to go down the drain. Treat it as, as something that's precious, that you want to, to grow, and you want it to take, take it to fruition, which is your children being intelligent, uh, healthy, well-functioning uh, adults, okay? And it's an investment. So you do it together, you have a greater chance of, of, of uh, going through the difficult times, because there will be difficult times. If it's imposed, you can always say, well, I didn't ask for it. Somebody else did, so maybe I can change it, and so on. And that's, you know, uh, whether it be lawyers in collaborative law, mediators, uh, parenting coaches that help, you know, parents and so on, when the parents find their own solutions, and they can, then it's always uh, advantageous. Absolutely. So you do believe that, uh, in fact, People, even in uh, Jane and John's, even in a high conflict, well, medium conflict situation, uh, could resolve their issues using mediation and collaborative. The answer doesn't always have to be, let's go to court and let's get a judge to figure it out for us or let them decide. Yeah. No, absolutely not. No. Okay. No. In, in fact, as I've, as I've <coughs> we've discussed many times in the past, going to court is the worst way of settling a dispute of any nature. And in particular, in the context of family disputes, it's horrible because it turns people who need to work together for the rest of their lives into enemies. That's right. right. Yeah. And, and other than in a very small minority of cases where you have domestic violence, you have, uh, you have substance, uh, abuse. substance mental abuse, illness. Uh, mental illness, uh, parental, uh, par uh, parental, parental alienation, alienation that really is difficult to, 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 to deal with. Uh, yeah, other than those kind of situations, why on earth would, would parents go to court and have somebody tell them how to parent their kids, what they need to do, and so on? Even in the division of assets, there's a practical, logical way. The law is pretty clear on how you divide up assets. I mean, you really, really need to find complications, or, or and again, it's rare cases, yes, that's why we have a, we have judges. That's why we have the courts, but not for a majority of people who want to go before a judge because they feel they they have the right to do that, and secondly, because somehow they're going to get a better deal. Yeah. You yeah. don't get a better deal. Your children never get a better deal when one parent loses. Never, never, never. And I just have never seen in the thousands of children that I've dealt with, you know, literally thousands. Outside those very. Yes. Small category yes. Of small, absolutely, situations. because there are situations that yeah. are impossible to deal yes. with outside of a but that's not judicial. The reality for most people. No, not for most people. No, no, it's a small number, and fair enough. You know, there's a place for litigation, but it's not the way it's used. It's 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 just not uh, abused. First recourse. It's abused. It's absolutely. It's, I do agree that people are abusing the system. I believe that they're going too quickly because it's too <clears> easy to go to court. Um, I don't think that people, and correct me if I'm wrong, are actually thinking about the financial consequences of going to litigation. I mean, they calculate their first time around going to court and what it would cost for their legal fees and the paperwork and, and, um, and so on and so forth. But they don't really think about the fact that once you go to court, it's just a loop, right? You're not, someone's not going to be happy. They're going to go back and someone else is going to go back and again and again. So, you know, when, when one person is always upset with, uh, with the decision, which in most cases it will be, because that's just the way it is, um, it, you keep going back and then you don't realize how much money you're spending. And then when you look back and you say, whoa, I've just spent my $50,000 or my $100,000, how on earth am I going to pay it back now? Which is a big issue where how are, how are average income families supposed to pay off $100,000 of debt? 
that it's is money. <laughs> exactly. It's money that not only are the children losing in the meantime, and they're being ne uh, neglected what they should be getting, whether higher education or sports program or whatever it is, it's also the fact that no one is saving for their future. And I do believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the government did think about that to some degree, that there's a lot of money floating around to the wrong places, um, and it's not helping the future of any of these families. Well, uh, you know, certainly uh, more can be invested directly in helping co-parents. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's very few services that are available. As a mediation, yes, it's a formal uh, service provided by the government, or you can provide it uh, in a private, uh, in a private uh, basis. But you don't have, for example, in CLSCs, adequate or enough trained counselors or even programs that will address co-parenting needs, high-conflict couples, um, uh, have a, a, a portal, or like they do in Australia, where then there is a family dispute and so on, you have to, if you have children, you have to go through this portal where they do a triage. They, they figure out, okay, what is the problem here? They don't just, you don't go from there to court, okay? Uh, and they have experts there to have, uh, you know? And so if there's psychosocial services that are needed, fine. If there are counseling services, coaching services, they're there. If some evaluation sometimes is necessary, it's provided. Or at least they'll direct you, okay? And so, but we don't have that kind of portal here. The CLC is supposed to be, or the new system that's being, that's being uh, implemented, supposed to be a first entry yeah. point of service. For these families, it's not, okay? And this is what needs to change. Uh, and, and I think that if we make changes at that level, it's going to be uh, so much better for, for these families where they can get services when they need it, not six months, a year after. They get trained people that will respond to their needs and the system will save, I can't tell you how much money. I mean, financially, I mean, it's a drain on the society to have kids who are dysfunctional because of their parent, uh, parental conflict. Yeah. You know, drain uh, uh, resources in the school system and, you know, in the health system. I get a lot of referrals of psychosomatic symptoms because parents fight and kids get caught in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a drain on the health system. Absolutely. It's a drain on, on, on mental health professionals' use of time. I mean, you know, and so a lot can be, by helping these families, providing the right services, I think that would help a great deal. It's at a preventative level. Uh, so right services at the right time. Yes. Not wait until it's too late. Not wait until the, uh, you know, the, the, the worst has already happened. Because it's a crisis. People yes. going through a separation or a divorce where there's conflict, where there's disagreement. It's a crisis. Simple as that. Exactly. And people in crisis uh, don't have the luxury of saying, well, I'll wait six months and uh, when you come up with a solution or help me somehow, I'll, I'll you know. Crisis, you react. You fight. Or it's flight, okay? It's fight or flight, okay? You know, because it's, yeah. And so most people fight. Yeah. Sometimes people uh, take flight, unfortunately. When they do that, the children lose, even, even sometimes even more because they get abandoned, okay? But we have less of that now. And when I started, it was a lot more flight, okay? Mm -hmm. But people fight because it's a crisis. So in that time, when there is this, this critical situation, and this is why even lawyers... Are, are, are training more in terms of how to deal with, with this kind of situation when clients come to see them, okay? Because they are in crisis. So what do you do with someone in crisis? Well, you don't react to someone in crisis the same way as you react to somebody who, you know, has thought about it, reflected about a situation. So. Right. so really that's the, one of the main purposes of the revolution that I always talk about is the fact that um, I do feel that there is a major need and, and a major uh, flaw in our system where we're not being helped, Jane and John's are not being helped enough. Uh, so part of the revolution is to change the status quo, is to change the way things are being done, uh, to make it better and easier for parents and children to survive the divorce. Thank you very much, Mr. Bachman. Thank you. Mr. Javadi.